Hi, tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day in the U.S., and many of us here in the U.S. and abroad will gather with family and our dearest friends to enjoy each other's company, devour turkey and vegetarian alternates, to celebrate our plenty, and give thanks to our providential God for all these blessings, material and emotional. In Jewish tradition, we give thanks following even the simplest repast with the grace after meals. And on Shabbat, we preface the grace with a wistful and beautiful Psalm 126 that relates our gratitude for our food with our gratitude that the dream of the restoration of Israel to its land has come true. And this psalm was composed not following Israel's independence in 1948, but sometime following the Persian king Cyrus's permission for the Jews to regain control of Israel in 538 BCE. In my illuminations, I celebrate the fulfillment of that earlier return to Zion and the modern miracle of again after 2,000 years of exile, drawing sustenance from our sacred soil. Now, I don't know about you, but despite having sung this psalm at every Shabbat and festival meal since infancy, given all the happy distractions of the busy dinner table, I never really paid much attention to its actual words until I sat down to study it some years ago for my book, I Will Wake the Dawn, Illuminated Psalms, that was published in 2007. It's been a special joy now to reconsider it carefully for my new Kabbalat Shabbat book. So let's read it through together. It's very short and see what it really says. A song for the steps of the temple. When the Lord restored Zion's exiles, we felt we were dreaming. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with song. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things with this people. The Lord has done great things for us. We rejoiced. O oh Lord, restore our exiles like seasonal streams in the desert. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Though one goes out weeping, as he carries his bag of seed, he returns singing as he carries in his sheaves. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever. We will bless the Lord now and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord for he is good, for his kindness is eternal. Who can express the Lord's mighty acts or proclaim all his praise? Now I should add here that I've given you Shir Hamalot as we actually sing it on Friday night. It's not only Psalm 126, but it adds on a couple of other Psalms verses at the ends. As my collaborator in this project and the translator here, Ray Shendlin, suggested in his literary commentary, the expression, those who sow in tears will reap in joy, has become proverbial. After enunciating it, the psalmist concretizes it by imagining an actual person weeping as he sows, singing as he brings the harvest home, a touching image for Israel in exile and restoration. Its verses use agricultural metaphors, water essential in the arid land, and seeding, often a matter of risky guesswork to fuse the love of Zion, its people, and the land with faith in Israel's providential God to introduce the grace, grace after meals. I should add here that I owe much of my insight into the agricultural importance in this psalm to Ellen Davis, the Protestant theologian at Duke, who has, who has contributed so much to this field, and a dear friend. The Hebrew and English illuminations contrast anxious and painful, yet still fertile exile with joyful and fruitful redemption, using these agricultural metaphors within the psalm. Both paintings, incidentally, show the same locale, a spot on the modern-day kibbutz Yotvata. In the Hebrew illumination, the woman is not the glorious Sabbath bride or queen that we read of elsewhere in the Sabbath liturgy, but following Lamentations and Jeremiah, she is Jerusalem, mourning in the wake of exile, longing for restoration to her land. She, she leaves her land, going into exile, dragging the seed bag behind her through the sunset landscape. Yet in the midst of the barren, destroyed landscape of stones and broken trees, the fallen sprouts sprout, uh, the fallen seeds rather, sprout with promises of rebirth that she cannot see. The desert's vernal springs tumble down a hillside, feeding the dry land with water, in Jewish mysticism, feeding the human realm with wisdom. Brilliant day has arrived here on the English illumination, 
a sparkling sky and clouds promising life-giving rain in the landscape of modern Israel. As the vernal springs again flow from that same hillside, young Israelis drive tractors through burgeoning fields and date orchards, cultivating the bounty afforded by hard work and divine providence. Now, these illuminations fuse ancient and modern Israel, not only by placing the two scenes in the same location, but also including images of tractors and ancient archaeology. The columns flanking the texts present a rosette pattern adapted, adapted from a frieze from a 4th or 5th century synagogue at Chorazin in the northern Galilee that's now in the collection of the Israel Museum. The columns are topped by proto-aeolic capitals from Ramat Rachel near Jerusalem that date to, lit to the late 9th century BCE, contemporary with the early Davidic dynasty, which are now in the collection of the Bible Lands Museum in Jerusalem. Follow these little videos for further adventures exploring the Jewish spirit through visual midrash. Full discussions of the poetry and paintings above can be found in Kabbalat Shabbat, The Grand Unification, that I published on September 6th, the 3rd of Elul. I've also published a matching paperback venture, Kabbalat Shabbat, The Grand Unification, at the Sabbath table, which contains just the illuminations of the songs and prayers chanted before Shabbat and around the dinner table. This way, everyone at the Shabbat table can share the lovely paintings and ideas along with the lucky person holding the hardback book. And I'm hearing from, I'm hearing from many people that using these books together are, is transforming their Shabbat dinners. As you see on the screen, the books can be purchased at your favorite book source um, and or clicking on the website there. You can find out more about my Hebrew Illuminated Manuscripts and Book Talks at www.dbandart.com. Thanks very much and happy Thanksgiving.